Hi guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Titus, your host, and I've got some good friends on today. Uh, I don't think we've ever, all of us, been on together at the same time. No. And you, have you been on? I haven't. You been. haven't been on the podcast? Are you <laughs> First kidding? Time. First One time. of the most loyal <laughs> listeners. Man, shame on me. <laughs> but anyways, I was, I've been thinking about trying to get more guys. It's always me and one other person or me and a guest, but it's kind of nice to like try to get more people. And I mean, I've got set for four years, so it's kind of nice to have us all here today. But what we're going to first go over, and I'll have to get Charles's version whenever he's on next with me, but we got to hear about your incident last night. Little accident. Yeah. But Yeah, so me and Dad and Connor headed out to some friends last night and uh, did some bow shooting, and on the yeah, way were home. Were you guys all there, too? I wasn't there. Adam I was in Connor. Oh, that's right. You were yeah. up north. But um, northbound on 99 in Merced right now, they're doing a bunch of new road construction. And um, right now they have a center divider right between the two lanes. And then, um, yeah, so it all comes down to one lane right now. So we're headed home. And um, I was like, I'm going to take the back roads. And then me and Dad start talking. And we're just like, no, nah, I'll just go down the freeway. So we're driving down the freeway and just talking and um all of a sudden, it starts getting a little rough. That road's super rough right now. Mm -hmm. Just I don't. It's just the maintenance on that road and how it is. It's just California terrible. roads. California terrible roads period. right now. And um, there's been so many accidents on it right now. I mean, mm -hmm. just oh, the other yeah. day, right by the shop, there was a collision and two rough. truck two truckers ran bad. over that that Mercedes and completely smashed it. And I can't believe that guy lived. I can't believe it either. Because I mean, you went funny. over there and got pictures and one of our buddies. How'd from you work, get pictures? One though? of the buddies from work has a friend on the fire department. Oh, so, oh, gotcha. gotcha. Close okay. Yeah. But yeah, so we're just talking and come down the road and it's so narrow. You, of course you want to slow down because there's only a few feet gap between those dividers and the rails. Well, all of a sudden just boom. Dad's like, what's that? And of course the car starts rumbling. I'm like, oh, tire blue. And, um, just slowing down, slowing down. I look down, speedometer's going down to about 40, 45. Well, that road's uneven. And all of a sudden, my explorer just started going left, right, left, right, and fishtailing. And we're in between those dividers. And, I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm just trying to keep it straight, and there's nothing mm -hmm. I can do. And um, look over at Dad. Dad's all tensed up. And we're just, he just goes to praying. And um, there was nothing I could do to really keep it in control. Mm -hmm. I, eventually, I just kind of let the steering wheel go loose because, I mean, I was trying to go left. It wouldn't go left, go right. Mm -hmm. Nothing was nothing was happening. And um, my back end ended up hitting that center divider mm -hmm. and smashed into it, caused the car to start going more out of control. And it actually twisted us on um, the overpass and caused us to hit the guardrail head on the mm -hmm. overpass. And, I mean, at that second it was like, Lord, keep your hand on us because I didn't know if we were going to go over or not. Mm -hmm. If we would have went over, it would have been – that would have been bad. It would have been bad because, I mean, we would have free fell, I don't know how many feet, mm -hmm. and landed on the road below. But um, hit us, hit the guardrail, completely turned us around. We were facing the opposite direction mm -hmm. on 99. And um, looked over at Dad. I'm like, you good? He goes, yeah, I'm good. I go, you good? He asked me if I was okay. And I go, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just, just to blow out. And, I mean, it caused the car to go into a major fishtail yeah. and just lost – lost control and ended up smashing it. But thank the Lord he kept his hand on us because, I mean, I've already been in a serious accident and mm -hmm. then being in another one, it's just it's just the grace of God mm -hmm. that he's kept his hand on me and Dad and just thankful. But you'll have to get Dad's version of it because yeah. he goes in, he has a lot more details because he was a passenger. A lot more adjectives. A lot more adjectives because he was, he was in the passenger seat seeing yeah. the whole thing, me trying to keep control. I looked over at him and I was just, just trying to stay focused and mm -hmm pray and keep his hand on us and just c try to keep the car in control and mm -hmm. eventually lost cl control and just crashed into it but yeah i got out and both stand up we were okay and luckily the person behind us that seen everything going on as soon as it happened he turned his hazards on slowed down traffic mm -hmm. and which there's nowhere else to go there's nowhere else to go because so it just lane. i bet you it was back to far oh it was so far and i mean he got out asked if we were okay and then um another individual walked up and he was kind of trying to get us to move out of the way. He had to go somewhere and ended up helping us push the car out. And Well, where could you push it, though? We just had to push it. We just squeezed it over as far as we could on that divider. 
and he pulled as close as he could, and then we got as many cars as we could through. Mm. Guy helped us direct traffic through, and then all of a sudden a semi came up. And of yeah, course, he couldn't over. make it through, and yeah. it was over. But, um, yeah, CHP rolled up, helped us out, come in with the um, tow truck, and got us out of there. But, no, glad we're alive. And It's nonstop over there, like us doing yeah. the medevac thing. It's constantly we're getting calls to go over there. Yeah. It's insane. It's just the setup of it. It's setting up people for failure. Mm-hmm. I mean, even the truckers, driving in a car, it's, it's super snug. But I can imagine trying to drive a truck in there right now because mm-hmm. it's – it's oh yeah, I'd be nervous. Yeah, it's just set up yeah. right now. So yeah, I've um, had a couple right next to the shop like just recently. The one was just a couple of days ago, but like a few weeks ago, we had another crash right there next to the shop too. It's uh yeah, that, that one yeah. we were just talking about right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ran that guy's that big rig's tire com- went over the middle dead middle of the truck. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that guy's or whoever was in that was alive. I don't either. That's insane. If really it would have really caught it from directly behind, it would have just like accordion the. The yeah, car and yeah, would have, yeah. No way he would have got it. Yeah, it's it's nonstop up there, and you can see when you drive down there on those T rails, they all have got black marks mm-hmm. going down all of them. You know, yep. people yeah. scrape, people it, scrape it, in it or on their phone. Like I, I can't even imagine trying to look at your phone Mm-mm, when no. you shouldn't be looking at it anyways when you're driving, right? But the fact when you're in that situation and looking at it, no way. Like yeah. that's just asking for mm-hmm. a tap. And I mean, because I always, I'm, I'm, I drive that way to work a lot going south, and I'm like. Tensed up because I'm like I feel like I'm gonna hit scrape it anyways because I'm so close to it you know yep. trying to pass anybody but anyways I'm uh, glad you guys are okay definitely have to get your dad's version on that but um uh well we we're gonna talk a little bit about too kind of what your guys' trip down to Arizona this year that we're way behind on when that actually yeah. happened but what uh first off I didn't I get forget to tell everybody that's listening it's Talon and Adam. Tini and Connor Driscoll here today. So if you if you're just listening on the audio version, you won't you won't see see him obviously. So I'm telling you it is here. But if you watch on YouTube, you'll see everybody here. But uh, anyways, I kind of like to go over what bow setups each of you guys have. I'm I'm on the low end of the totem pole here. Just got a lowly bear. But um, see what you guys have as far as what you like for your the bow you have, and then the arrow setup, and then kind of go into the trip that you guys made to Arizona. Um, I'll let me start with you, Connor. What do you got for a bow and your arrow setup? So I've got the Matthews 2020 edition. It's the VXR, 28-inch axle-to-axle. Um, I'm shooting with a spot hog sight, two-pin, mm-hmm. where the pins come up from the bottom up. So most sights you'll see come from the side, but mm-hmm. with that spot hog, it comes oh, yeah. up from the bottom. Yeah, I was looking at that. It's got two two pins, so I, I like that. It's a dial sight, so... However far I can shoot is how far it'll shoot. Um, I shoot. What's your tape go up to right now? Like I got it just a hundred. 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 Yeah, that's plenty far for me. Oh well, yeah. Um, and then my arrow setup. I got Victory Archery. I think the models VAP TKO or something, but uh, they're really really narrow. They're just like shooting a number two pencil. But when you hit what you're uh, when you hit you know, any target or something, those arrows are blowing through them. So mm-hmm. everything I've shot with it, I've been super impressed with. So I love those Victory Archery arrows. And, uh, yeah, got the Matthews VXR. What broadheads are you running right now, yeah. Colin? I'm using Grim Reaper broadheads, three blades. I shot um, turkey last this last season. Which you Was might that what a, you shot it with? Yeah. And oh, okay. I mean, everything I've hit, I shot a javelina down in Arizona. We can go over that story and just blew right through it. So mm. uh, those Grim Reaper broadheads and those Victory Archery arrows are just, they'll tear something up. Mm-hmm. They'll tear something up. <laughs> so you're like kind of like in the weight, yeah. the heavier weight to blow through yeah. the target. Yeah. Is there any advantage of having that versus one that doesn't blow through like that, having a lighter setup? I, I think mean, it's just, just deeper penetration with the heavier arrow. Mm-hmm. Packs more of a punch. Um, a lighter arrow has speed, but... Yeah, the theory behind it, I'm. I think it's just heavier, hits harder. I mean, it makes more sense to blow, yeah. th- go through, and hit all yeah. the vitals than it does, right? I don't yeah. know because I know some guys well, it's just you, like speed. So you get, I'm like, if you blow through, you got blood coming out both sides. Yeah. So quicker, you know, extermination. But I wonder if guys are thinking because of faster speed that the flinch or the movement of the animals less yeah. arrow drop too. Yeah. For further distances. For further distances, right? Yeah. So it's just kind of what you want to do, I guess. Did you do something to your face? 
Yeah, so I thought we, it looked swollen, dude. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but I gotta know. No, it's good. We're playing. Is football. it just this side? Or, yeah, or this no, side? it's just the side. We're okay. playing football. That's might as well go over it quick. I, but, thought, he, uh, I thought he had a mint in his mouth, uh, <laughs> dude. Or storing up for the winter like a chipmunk <laughs> or something. <laughs> in our buckle, at brother Dave's thing. So uh, uh, Wesley Burgess, um, I knew somebody had all the Burgesses. <laughs> somebody <laughs> got the ball and tossed it back to Wesley Burgess. Well, he ran around back of everybody, kind of backdoored everybody. So I came around the left to cut him off, and, you know, he was coming straight for me, so I just, we both hit just like mm. that. Well, he's a tall kid, and he's a little higher than I thought. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. And so I just came down, but he came up with a knee and mm. caught me. So I tackled him, play ended and stuff, but, uh, I mean, just saw white and everything. Yeah. And uh, and it was, like, super sore right here and All bruised. That. So it wasn't too bad. It was just, like, bruised. And then I got home in the shower that night, and I usually – Clean out my nose in the shower, so I, I, uh, oh, I, I did the same thing. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> I, uh, I blew my nose. Well, this nostril like gets a little pugged up uh-huh. sometimes, and so I put a lot of pressure, and my face goes Whoop, and just blew up like a balloon. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I'm like feeling it, and I'm like feeling my face is all big, and I go look in the mirror, and my face is just like swollen right here. Oh. And uh, I asked my dad, I'm like, is it weird that it did that? Because you know it was fine before. Yeah. And uh, I guess I was talking to Jason at lunch, and he said uh, same thing with fighters. If you get hit real, hit real hard in the face, you're not supposed to blow your nose. Really? Yeah, like it'll do that. I didn't know that. I wonder know what that, that does. Is it? I don't know what it's about. Um, I don't know. We should. I could Google it or something. But he just said, yeah, like the fighters, they tell it you not to blow It almost even looks your like your eye. Really. Like it just something looks like a little bit. I arc. guess if you get hit high or something, and like it could swell up your eyes if you do that, mm. and like uh, it cause you know, sight problems. So his knee just pounded you right in that high cheekbone? Yeah, I was right here because mm. uh, I turned head right like that. Oh, came and just nice. brought both legs nice together, too. but he came up with it. Yeah. That's the only disadvantage of when we, because anybody listening, we've all we've ever done our whole lives is play tackle football without no pads and anything. But you're just, you're so asking for it. Because, I mean, that's the proper way to tackle, right? Go low. Yeah. But you don't got a helmet. You, I can't tell how many yeah. times either – just in my shoulder, neck, or my face, just got plowed by a knee mm-hmm. or something. And it's just like, mm. <laughs> that's why guys don't go low when we play without pads because you're kind of, it's I a little go, scary go going low to and pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll make the tackle every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad I know that now because I was like, man, I'd, I hate to ask him if there's nothing there. But <laughs> it's not like super obvious, though. It's just no. something like the yeah. coloration, too, a little bit. Yeah. But well, anyway. We'll see. Uh, so, Talk to us about your setup, your boat. Uh, so I got the same thing as Connor, actually. Um, we were kind of looking at the same time, talking about those bows. And uh, I hadn't quite saved up That's the money funny. yet, and uh, and he found one on Craigslist. So he was, he was, uh, you know, harassing me about copying mm-hmm. his bow setup. <laughs> we were, we were <laughs> he, both. he had a pick before I did, but I... Uh-huh. I, uh, You're already on it though, huh? Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> hey, there's one on Craigslist. Why don't you get this? So it's the, the VXR 28-inch. And uh, I'm actually running a little bit. Wait, wait. So size. you're shooting a 28? Yours too? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the other size though? 31? Uh, yeah, 31. 31. 31. Yeah. And then and they you got like a, the shorter. You guys like the shorter, huh? I do. Yeah, I went for the shorter just because, um, you know, walking around in the brush or anything like yeah. that. But I shot, I actually shot the 31 uh, down at Stage Stop and I, I really liked the way yeah. it felt. It was like a toss up, you know. But I don't know. I just went with the shorter bow. But I'm running a little different sight than. Connor, I've got the Ascent Mountain Light, I think. Mm. It's a five pin by Black Gold. And uh, it's a Black Gold, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And so I've got the five pin with the dial. And uh, I really like that that setup, especially like the dial. I was would have been handy to have our first Arizona trip. That's fun. I'm sure we'll kind of we'll kind of kind of sum up our first trip, but uh, but yeah, I like that. And then the arrows. Are what are those axis arrows? Those are Easton Easton axis mm. arrows. I think I'm shooting 340 grains. I think 340 grains. Like 340 spine. 340 spine. Yeah. Mm. And uh, Drew Drew down at Stage Stop got me set up for that. And then what are the, I'm using Rage? I think oh, okay. uh, mechanical mm-hmm. broadheads. The three three blades. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they're 100 grains. So okay, I'm liking that setup. I don't know. I shot a deer um, opening day of deer season with uh with that arrow and and uh broadhead set up blew right through it it was it was mm-hmm. uh the arrow did great but i was a little off on my shot placement mm-hmm. um too far forward ended up catching like in the, the high shoulder uh-huh. in the in 
high right in front of the shoulder and didn't catch any vitals. It was all all me, just very few drops of blood, tracking mm-hmm. forever and and nothing. But the the broad head opened up good. Um, and my dad actually saw that deer um, just recently. Um, went back up to that property and saw that deer and said it's healing oh, yeah. up good and everything. Oh. Yeah, so if I would have had good shot placement, the arrow did what it was supposed to, mm. but I just didn't. Do you ever get nervous I, about a mechanical? Yeah, a little bit nervous, but I mean, I've never had one, never had one not do what it's supposed to. So mm-hmm. I guess, I guess somebody that shot him more and maybe had something happen to him would be more gun shy. Yeah, but I, don't I know. think I might actually put that turkey. I think it's Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper, probably. Ooh. Oh, yours? Broadheads. Yeah, yeah I think it okay. might. Yeah, it is Grim Reaper Broadheads. Okay. Man, I wish I knew what that one, I can't remember what brand was that I shot that turkey that I just, I, it, sang, it would cling really bad. And it wasn't cheap ones, but they would, it sounded like they're loose, but when you go to tighten it, it's like as tight as it can be. Were you shooting the Rage Turkey Broadheads? It might have been those. I think so. The one with the hooks on them? Mm, man, there were three, there was three of them. No, maybe there was only two. I can't remember, but. They just always had, like, you could kind of make a rattle noise with them. Yeah. No, it wasn't like that. No, it's just mentally, it's like, and when I shot it, you can even hear it on the video, it's like, quing. I mean, like, I thought it was my bow, which there was other issues with that, too, but I kind of wondered, now that sight you have, what's the name of that? You said the Ascent? Ascent Mountain Light, I think is what Mountain I Mountain Light? Because that sounds like what, so yours is uh, adjustable, too, right? Yeah. See, but I like 5-pin, and my this was my thoughts. You guys can think if I'm... And we'll go over yours. I'm not going to go over my bow yet, but there ain't much to go over. <laughs> but I'm just asking you because you've had that for a while, that site, huh? Since you got that bow? Since I got the bow, yeah. I don't know why I never even paid attention to that because that's basically what I want. I'm going to get a new one this year. I want the five pins, but I, what my mindset is, okay, when I'm hunting, I know I could adjust it, but I'm going to make it 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Right? Is that five? Yeah. And leave it there. Don't it? Don't eat, like when I'm going hunting. Say leave it there. Don't even. I'm not shooting over that unless I really need to. And then I would adjust. But I don't want to get stuck out there and have it on 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah. Right. And forget that. But but I want to have a sight for a hundred, like or a one ten. Well, yours go to one ten probably, huh? Uh, if you no, adjust that all the way down. I've just got it set to a hundred. I kind of make shifted up my sight tape. Okay. Um. So I don't know if I set it up completely proper. It works. But the way I only get out to a hundred. Okay. Well, either um, way, even then, at least you have a pin. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to have a pin because we were stacking mm-hmm. pins last year when we were shooting out there. Yeah. yeah. Which I mean, like again, like I'm saying, I'm not promoting anybody to go shoot at an animal a hundred yards. I mean, I would, I wouldn't do that. But there's guys I know I've watched them do it, and they're confident. At, uh, mm-hmm. What's his name? I sh- I've saw him shoot two or three deer at 80, 90 yards. Le- um, Levi Morgan. I I haven't seen him. I, mean, I know he does it, but uh. It's a guy on YouTube. Tim Wells. Well, not him. He, he, there's a lot of good guys out there. He's a younger guy, kind of Chris bigger. Uh, Josh Bomar. Josh Bomar. Is it Bomar? Uh, oh. Seek one. Seek one. I just can't remember his name. He don't shoot that far, does he? I, the one he did, it was like 85 yards. Roy. Dude, it, yeah, Roy. His name's Roy. Lee. Right? I think it's Roy. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, his name's Roy. Lee Roy. <laughs> Lee Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Roy. <laughs> No, he he actually shot him out of a. Um, it was on private. You know, well, it's all, you know, urban hunting. But he was in this uh, ground blind, and it was just that. like no way. And he's the one I think shoots with a lot more speed than he does weight. Maybe maybe he does both. I don't know. Do you know what he has his his poundage set up at? I don't know, but no, I'm I'm, I'm assuming sure. he shoots shoots at least eighty pounds. I'm sure. But anyways, I I'm I'm gonna have to look at that. So you're gonna have to show me because that's yeah. the, I for sure want to get that set up. Mm-hmm. Right, I'd almost, I'd almost like to have three or four pin instead. Um, but I don't know. It's nice having the five pin because in a, a lot of times in a hunting situation, you won't have the the chance to dial. You know, mm-hmm. um, maybe you just gotta range quick and draw back and shoot. Yeah. So it's nice having the five. So have they a do lot have a options. four. Um, on that I've heard of setup? people just pulling a pin oh, or, okay. or something. Um, but it is also nice, even though you have the five pins. That way, maybe if you if you're in on a bedded buck or something, mm-hmm. maybe like 46 yards or 45 yards, and you have the time, it's nice to just dial to exact yeah. rather than holding in between pins, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's nice if you do have the time. Yeah. What about you, Tom? Um, your setup? Yeah. Right now I'm running the Matthews Verdicts, which is the year before you guys bow, I believe. 19, I think. 19. But um, I'm shooting a 31-inch axle-axle and set at 70 pounds. But um, 
Yeah, and I'm running a black gold. I think mine's just a mountain light three pin, but it is adjustable. So I can dial it to 100. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the three pin, 20, 30 to 40. And then if I have to dial, I can. But having that five pin is an advantage because, I mean, if you're, if you're in a situation where it's moving, mm. they're past 40, you're, you have to dial. But um, really, but like then that. again, you got more pins that accidentally pick the wrong. That pin, is true. Right? That is true. I like having having more of an open. <laughs> we got I, a story for that. If it wasn't so <laughs> difficult to run a one pin, which I know a lot of guys do, mm. I'd actually go to a one pin. But I like having a more field of view in my scope, being able to see. Mm. Yeah. See, but um, shooting that with the uh, also the Eastern Axis arrows, shooting three hundred spines, so heavier grains per inch, and running a. I'm not sure if it's a 45 or 50 grain half out insert, and then pairing that up with the Levi Morgan series Schwacker 100 grain broadhead, mm. so two blade mechanical. But um, yeah, I mean it. Is I've, that what you shot your deer with last that's year? That's what I shot my deer with last year. Okay. So I I tested a bunch of broadheads, fixed broadheads, mechanicals, shot Rage, um, Grim Reaper, a few other ones, and those Schwackers they just they just grouped good with my bow. Mm-hmm. So, well, how they, do you how do you Practicing with with the mechanical, do you just well, reset it? I'm just reset it. Most of them are resettable, so you can reset them mm-hmm. and shoot them. And then if I buy a package, I'll just take one out and then test it. Mm. And then if I like it, I'll keep it. But so far, the Schwacker's been amazing. I mean, I've killed multiple turkeys with it, um, Havelina. And then also this last August, I killed my first California archery buck mm-hmm. with it. And, I mean, it, it didn't completely pass through, but it – it went halfway through, mm-hmm. and then... Um, Did you hit bone or anything? Or I think I what happened was the way the angle was uphill, and I shot and hit him perfect, double lunged him, but it came out the way that he was angled. It mm-hmm. came out on the shoulder, and when he ran, it snapped that arrow. But um, I believe I hit bone. But, I mean, the, the entry hole was perfect, and a little high, about three inches high, so he didn't bleed out. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it, it he went probably 60 yards and fell over. Ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. Yeah. So, had really good success with that. And, yeah, and then I started fletching my own arrows, running a little bit different fletchings. Mm-hmm. So right now I'm shooting the Boeing heat veins with those arrows and that broadhead. And just, it's Which, just what's the name of that style? It's I have a three-degree helical left oh, okay, right helical. now. So it's it's quite a bit of a bend in your fletching, but it counteracts. Because naturally, I guess with Matthews, their bows want to throw the arrows left. Mm-hmm. So if you can adjust your vein to counteract mm-hmm. for that, it's not such a hard spin coming mm-hmm. out of the bow. So it causes your arrow to shoot straighter at longer mm. distances. So. I actually shot his ar- his arrows at stage shop the other day. Yeah, and they actually they grew. I mean, grouped yeah perfect. So. Even just throwing it on my bow. Yeah. So, like, so three pin sight, around a five hundred grain arrow, seventy pounds, thirty one inch axle axle Matthews verdicts. Mm. Well, I got. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. I'm gonna flex on you guys yeah. right now. Tell the people at home. <laughs> I won't even tell you guys except you'd be like, "Well, you never said yours." Hey, the hunting public's rocking it, man. Dude, they're killing animals. I mean, you guys, we all know that, right? You guys don't think, "Oh, because I shoot Matthews, I kill mm-hmm. more." But no. it is That's nice not shooting not yours <laughs> versus that. It's a huge difference, right? Yeah, but you can still kill them. Um, I can't even remember. That's how much I love mine. Is I can't even remember the model of mine. Is it the legend? Legend, white-tail, the white tail legend. White tail legend. The yeah. bear white tail legend. I think it's thirty one. I didn't get the shorter one. No, I think it's. Is it a twenty eight? No, it's thirty or thirty one. I think thirty. So, yeah. And I got a set of seventy pounds too. I actually just got a new string on it, but I couldn't tell you what the name of that brand was. But I ended up changing out for all all tan. But I got the inlines peep in it that they just did. But what's weird? I, I guess I kind of told you. It's it feels. Um, when I was looking through my other peep with the with the rubber band on it, I could see the it was a solid black when I would look through it and then I could line that up with the housing of my my sight. Whereas now this one, and I'm wondering why it's doing that, is it's blurry. The peep seems blurry to my eye almost like I almost semi I can't see it. So it's hard for me to line up those circles. It's weird. I, I don't know what's going on. Because, I mean, it's not like the string's any closer than it was before. Mm-hmm. It does kind of feel different, though, kind of like I'm, I feel like I'm putting my anchor point different. Do you different get that point? lined up? It's kind of weird. You might have to adjust it. If it's blurry, you might not have it quite set at the right height for your eye. Probably needs to get just it the, up maybe a little bit or something. Yeah, to square up Which would pull it away from me, right? If Because if the line's doing this, yeah, if I went up on the string, it would 
make it farther yeah. from my correct? You just kind of have to see if you're looking down or looking up when you when you anchor back. I think that's what I'm end up doing. Yeah. Is I'm kind of like kind of going. You like might that. be going up, so you might have to bring it up. Which is a pain because those are tied in. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, oh man. But I'm sure you could take it down to stage top and Drew would. He already did it once because he put it in there. Gotcha. And I was like, dude, this ain't this ain't the right spot. And he's like, oh, that's where the other one was, and I'm like, there's no way because mm-hmm. when I shot it, it was like this high above the target. Then when he put it back, it was just perfect. Yeah. Pretty much, but. Anyways, I just got cheap arrows. I don't. I can't remember what those things are called. They're the cheapest you can get. The gold, gold, gold uh, tips. Gold tip. I think. I think three hundred fifty spine, and I haven't. Sh- yeah, I did shoot. I did shoot at Turkey last year. But <laughs> public land. <laughs> Actually, stay tuned. I think I'm gonna finally post that one. I might have to do a little editing of the crying part because there was. <laughs> let them see. see it. We want to see it. see it. We want to see it. Let the people see. <laughs> no, it's embarrassing. It's that wine crying, pathetic, dude. I already told. I'm not gonna tell the story again. But oh, that was the, everything you could dream of. <laughs> Have you seen the clips? I don't think so. Have but you? I've heard never about revealed it. Oh, it to dude. Us. <laughs> you've been pretty up to Travis and Town are the only ones that seen. I've seen them. <laughs> he knows there was a lot of what, cry. I literally almost cried. I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing technically. I mean, I know. I watched you guys do it. You guys you know, know been doing it longer and everything. And I've, I know. I just, what I'm saying is I can't call. Like, mm. I know for the most part, like, okay, this is what you need to do. That thing came on a string. I'm going to throw the box call. I can't do a mouth call because that makes me gag. And, and and he just looked over at me and just come marching down to me. He's like, what in the world? I was shaking for a minute. Then I got myself under control. And he's right there in a stinking range finder. <laughs> ranged at 30, let's see, ranged at 30 or 31. And he ended up being like 37. So I literally just, oh, man. I... I didn't, you know, I didn't deserve to kill that turkey. You can't just walk into a sport that you haven't been very long and kill one with a bow. That's hard. Mm-hmm. That's you don't. No. You know what hard. I mean? All yeah. that's gonna be said about you is it's luck, anyways. So I gotta pay my dues. Yeah. That's why I missed. I <laughs> we'll have to see those clips here again because I, yeah, I know I got them. <laughs> They're right there on my hard drive. <laughs> you remember the Marcos we got after that hunt? Oh, you were know, like about to cry in the truck. Oh, oh, I was so funny. Because <laughs> you put a lot of time and effort in that, and I mean, dude, I chased mm. that Tom. Quite a bit. Yeah. Talent, uh, Colton did too. Yeah. Colton flung a couple arrows at that <laughs> dude, man. That's a big old. His beard's. Hey, that's an expensive bird, man. Losing that many arrows on that. I know. Ugh. Then I go back with the with the ground blind, and he didn't even, he learned. He got smart. But uh, had some jakes come through. Or was that mean you? Or was that mean Colton? Some jakes rolled through, and we just let them go through. And now I'm looking back. I'm like, I should have shot. It's probably Colton. Just yeah. get the bow thing out of the way. But anyway, so you guys talk to me, talk to us about uh, your guys' trip to. I know this is your second or third year you guys have went. Second. 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 Yeah. So I don't know. Start us off from the beginning of the trip to what went on in it. Um. So some of our guys from our church have been Arizona in the past, hunted Arizona in the past, and uh barney i think's been on here and johnny um they're kind of the main guys we've been talking to and they're like man you guys need to go to arizona go to arizona so we got to looking into it all right let's just do it let's just go for it so uh got to researching some units we uh like to like to hunt give it a shot and uh anyways got that a little dialed in last year um we hunted and uh we're like all right next year we're gonna go back we finally found the bucks and that was that would have been this year. We get there, got the hotel booked. We're all ready to go, and and uh, we're we we're about to get the hotels booked. <laughs> yeah. And then Adam looks it up. He's like, "Dude, the unit we hunted last year is closed." When we go, and we're yeah. like, "Are you kidding me? We just found the deer, you know?" Because uh, how many days did we spend first year? And don't they do that every other year or something? I'm there? not for My sure. My dad was saying something like that. We sh- yeah. I wish we would have known that before. Yeah. Because we spent what ten? How many days was that our first year out there? Like five or it was six, five, five or days, six I days. Think. Yeah, we found found the deer on the, the last two, well, last mm-hmm. day, and and half. Half. Yeah, yeah. day and a half. So we were excited to come back this year, and then <laughs> they closed it on that us. That was like heartbreaking. I bet. That's yeah. why we didn't come back with a deer this year. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we basically go back and had to relearn new country and do yeah. the same thing again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're like, so we got to looking at our options, and the guy at a bow shop about an hour away was telling Talon about this unit. Um, uh, pretty far south, like down by the border, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, 
I, I want to go check that out at least one day. Yeah. And we're like, you know, me and Adam's like, ah, I don't know. Talon's like, yeah. no, you said there's deer, man. The guy at the bow shop talked it up pretty good. Talon, he's like, here's a good spot. And he's like, he's <laughs> all over I'm it. like, let's go try it out because having to go and learn new country, it was just, I was just like, uh, I mean, I'm willing to do it. Mm -hmm. But these guys at the bow shop have been hunting down there for a long time. And they're like, go check this out. They go, there's deer down there. So trying to go find a new spot or going where people have hunted before and trying to Knew where deer was at. It was like it was very tempting. Yeah. So we kind of made up a game plan, and then from there we we're. I mean, yeah. We we started out. Um, what we do the first day we gave Talon Spot a chance. Mm -hmm. First two days, and then we hunted a unit the previous year that was not very good. We we're like, let's go check that out at least a day and see if anything's moved in. Mm -hmm. That was me. It was in, it was in the back of my mind. <laughs> it was well. It was everybody. We we're like, what if there's deer up there and we're missing it? You know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Started south, hunted a day, I think a day or two there. <clears throat> Drove like three or four hours further upstate and checked that spot out. There was like one forky or something yeah. there. In the and first we two like, days, we were seeing, we weren't seeing a lot of mule deer, but there was coos deer mm. everywhere. There was coos deer. Which would be deer. cool. Which was, yeah. I mean, we've never, we've never tried chasing cows or coos or whatever. How, I know. I've white heard like, coos. Call, they There's Arizona, people these, at Arizona yeah. just call them white the tail. Gray oh, yeah. do they really? They call them white yeah. tail. Really? So huh. we got in there and there we seen what well, we did see a bunch of mule deer does. We were seeing a bunch of does. Yeah, we did. So I guess we could lead them off with that the first two days was only coos deer open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mule deer didn't mm -hmm. open until the first and we got there two days early. Mm -hmm. So like we were we were looking for mule deer, kinda trying to find them, but if we saw a coos buck, you know, mm -hmm. we would or make a stop. We're we're just kinda feeling things out to see if it was majority coos, majority mule deer. But, you know, kind of scouting for when mule deer opened up on the first. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a lot of coos deer around there. Um, we stayed kind of in the flatter country and ended mm -hmm. up finding up finding that hill um later in the hunt and stuck to that most of the uh Is that because you were seeing stuff hunt. probably? Yeah, there was a there was a little mountain range kinda with a lot of coos mm -hmm. deer on it. And uh did we find that the first two days or that was when we came back from coming up? I think it was. Yeah. Because we checked the first the first two days we were kinda out in the flatter country, just seeing if the mule deer are rutting or whatever. And we seen some coos deer on that one hillside right next to the border. Remember those does? And you're like, Oh, there's coos deer right there. Yeah, those are the first ones we had confirmed, yeah, right? Confirmed with. And then we started driving around a little bit more. Seen a couple out in the flat country, mm -hmm. but realized those coos are staying more up in the rocks and the, the rougher country. Um, but those so. those coos deer are skittish, like beyond <laughs> skittish. Like we'd be driving trying to find the spot, and you'd see one off the road, and and when they seen your truck, they were, I mean, gone. Mm -hmm. Like running, you couldn't get them to stop. They were gone. Mm. So these bucks are, I mean, a mule deer is like. They'll see your truck, and sometimes they're like, oh, whatever, and they kind of mm. mosey off. I mean, these bucks seen you, and, and they're yeah out of there. Mm. So That's why road hunting wasn't going to pay off for us. Like, no. like we started off the first few days driving around in the flats, and we would see coos deer. You know, you'd see them. We'd mm -hmm. see them come out in the road. and But, I mean, you'd drive up on some does a few hundred yards up in the road, and they just, choo, they're gone in the brush. Gone. So, like, road hunting coos deer, we knew that was out of the question. Mm -hmm. Like, we either had to find mule deer that we could drive around and, and look for, or we had to go up where we can spot and stalk the coos deer because, mm -hmm. you know, you got to see them before they see mm -hmm. you. So went up to that other spot. What was that? That was opening day of mule deer season all. Archery, over the counter archery mule deer Was season. that when we went up to our first yeah, spot? Yeah, that was on the first. Yeah. So went up there and looked around. And then what did we spend? A, just a day up there, right? Yeah. Remember it, yeah. it yeah. snowed that night? It snowed that night. Was that the cheap hotel room? Yeah. <laughs> don't, oh my goodness! Don't don't recommend buying cheap hotel rooms in Arizona. Go for a little bit more money, boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was rough. Why? Is there stuff crawling in the sheets mm, and hair? Uh, and just I don't know. It was just just not good. Sketchy. Yeah, sketch. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so that was well. That was New Year's Eve. To take a shower. It was New Year's Eve, and and it was booked, man. There was like one mm. room left or something. Great, great place to hang out. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> New Year's Eve, man. Let's go. Oh. Yeah, so we should have thought of that yeah. before. So that that evening, we decided to head back, huh? Did we, we drive? We hunted that day, and it was freezing cold, windy. Remember, we got up on that mountain, mm -hmm. looking, for, and we found one buck, 
and uh, drove around some more. I'm trying to think what we all did that day. This is back by the border, right? After we had went. No, this is no. this is Your over spot. there where oh. chased that that one Your buck spot. last yeah, yeah. year. Yeah, I got on. It's it was kind of a I don't know. It was a hard deal to to leave that because last year, I mean, they were hunting other spots, but I was hunting this certain area. Um, just roads that I was hunting over there. And I, I got on bucks like every day. Mm-hmm. Like I'd see a buck, for sure a buck a day, two bucks a day, you know. And uh, I got the shot at that three-pointer in that area. I got, uh, I almost got a shot at a forked horn in that area. It was just, it seemed like the deer were there. And that was the last couple days of season after it had been open for so long of mule deer. And yeah. so <laughs> mule deer was just about to open when we went there this year. And I'm like, oh man, if we can get there, Right when it opens, you know, if it was that good last year at the mm-hmm. end, it ought to be real good this year. But the mule deer, the mule deer just weren't in there like they mm. were. Like I don't know what the deal was, but even water is that was that an issue or something? I don't know. Even your dad said he couldn't find them hardly until he got way, way north. Mm-hmm. Um, Which maybe so. part of the the rutting and stuff with the yeah. temperatures and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, just it was just off. It was just a weird deal. Yeah. It was tough. So what was that? Three and, and a half hours back down. Trying to put four, it all four <laughs> hours back down to the border. We're like, what are we gonna just so gonna you stay on, here? So you started at the border. Yeah, you went what? three and a half hours north. Yep. Then turn around and came, came went back came right back. The border. We yep. put miles on the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Whose truck? Yours? My yeah. truck, uh-huh. of course. <laughs> Mind you, this was this is before gas prices and <laughs> yeah, this is before it up. <laughs> Sleepy Joe. We were probably late to or high twos at that time. I'm thinking. Over there in Arizona, I'm sure it was cheaper than here. It was low super, threes. Oh, low threes, probably. Yeah. Hey, we seen the gas station filled her up. We're on a hunt, man. We're just going yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got back down there. And then what happened that day after we got back down there, we just did some driving, huh? I think so. Because had we had found the mountain yet that we hunted? I, I don't, don't remember if we hunted I think it. we did. I think we might have. Because remember we seen that one mule deer buck across the road? Yeah. Across the highway on the other side. Yeah. And then. Yeah, went so up, we, we went on the we, mountain. Yeah, we went back across and got up on that hill. So we kind of rifle hunters. We kind of based our next plan. We're like, well, we'll come back to this area and we'll hunt this little mountain range and mm-hmm. see. So first thing in the morning, we knew. We saw that nice coos buck. Yeah. It was a three-pointer with double eye guards. And he was just, he was like to his ears. Mm-hmm. He was just a, mm. a, a nice coos Tell buck. Tell him how that stock went. Yeah. Let's hear some stock stories. Was that my. I think that was your stock, right? Yeah, that was me and you. We both went up, but we split off. Remember, I went right and yeah. went left. Because those rifle hunters were up on the hill. Remember that? It was like his grandson. And Yeah, I thought, because if we're looking at the mountain range, didn't you go left over where we saw the lion? And I went. No, remember we were coming up the road, and Connor goes, oh, there's some deer right there. And we hopped out of the truck, and we're like, okay, let's go stock up on them. Remember they crossed up in front of us, crossed the road, and went over, dropped down in the canyon? No, I guess you guys can tell that story. <laughs> I guess I'm not. Yeah, it's kind of a blur now. Yeah, that was, I think that was like when we just got back and we were going so. up that, that was road. A, that was a, the morning, right? Like right before day, daybreak. No, right? it was that evening. That evening. Okay, that I'm morning, way off. Yeah. The first stock was the morning, right? The one when I stalked in on that wide three-pointer we saw. And uh, remember, we spotted some coos deer up on the hill and then... Uh, Oh yeah, I'm getting confused. Remember when <laughs> I went up into the while. I went up into the right and those guys just shortcutted us and yeah. went to the top and, and they, they pushed them over. Did they know you me. were there? I don't know. Like so that like was we were the first day. Yeah, yeah, we were there and we had spotted this nice coos buck early in the morning. You can help me out with the story. Mm-hmm. But like uh we're like, Oh yeah, this is the deer for sure. So I don't I don't remember if we rock, paper, scissored or Talon had spotted the group of deer and then I ended up seeing the buck, so I think I went for it. Um we had plenty of stock opportunities that trip, mm. we'll just say. But, mm. um, yeah, That's that was good, the first I mean, one. You got a chance. Yeah, it was fun. And so I, they sent me. I went off to the right. So we're looking at this big mountain, and it was kind of a bowl that we were looking at, and it did the same thing on the backside. Like there was this finger ridge that came out, and then there was a bowl on the backside. Mm-hmm. So we were looking at this face, and I thought if I can go around this finger ridge and come around the backside of these deer and poke up over the top, you know, because mm-hmm. they were they didn't seem like they were moving. He was with a little forked horn, right? They yeah, it was just him and a little fork horn, and they were just they just bedded down right in the middle of the bowl. Yeah, and we're like perfect opportunity. Yeah, I mean it was it's, it was set up perfect. So I I walked the road out. I mean I went way far, like way out and around, so no chance of spooking these deer because mm-hmm. they're like real skittish, you know. 
Well, it took me, how long did I stock for? Wow. 45 minutes, an hour. Yeah, probably, probably close to an hour. Probably an hour. Working my way just around. Finally, I get up on one of those finger ridges that break off the backside of the hill. So all I have to do is walk up that and uh, come over the top, and those deer will be there. Mm. Well, these guys drove in in a truck behind uh, Talon and Connor, and I'm keeping in contact with them on the radios. And and uh, they're like, hey, his truck just passed us. And I'm, they're like, the deer is still there, though. Well, I don't think they knew the truck went past them. Apparently, it saw the deer at some point because they went and stopped down the road mm -hmm. and just beelined for the deer. Like, I'm making this big old long stop, and, yeah. and they decided to just beeline, cut corners, you know. They had to have known you guys were parked right there. Yeah, because we had spot and scope set up, and we yeah. were sitting there looking. Yeah, and so all of a sudden, uh, the Talon and Connor hit me, and they're like, hey, the deer are moving around. And I'm like, all right. Well, I'm already I'm already uh, way on the backside. I'm like, I'll just go another ridge back, you know, in case they roll over the hill. In case they roll over the hill, I don't want to be in that back ravine, and yeah. they'll see me and spook out. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to go even further. And uh, so I went way out there, and I'm I'm like hooking it up this hill, trying to get up there before those uh, those deer move around. And as soon as no further than I get halfway up the hill, I hear something. I look, and there's just a deer standing, staring straight at me, right on the hillside that I'm on. And pretty soon, bam! They just blow out. They're only there for a few seconds. And they just blow out straight down the hill. And I'm like, what in the world? I'm like, I know. I thought I got my directions mixed up and like came up the canyon mm -hmm. they were in, and because I I glassed it up and I'm like, oh, I bet that's the buck that I was after, and so I glass it up and sure enough, it's that nice little three pointer. He runs down into the mm -hmm. flats, gone. Him and like four or five other does and that other little buck he was with. I'm like, I know I went way far enough. I did not come up the ravine they're in. Mm -hmm. Well, got to looking around there a little bit and I saw guys up on the point of the hill where they were at. So they had busted those deer two ravines back to the ravine I was coming up, like without me knowing. So I, I thought I came up the ravine they were in, but those guys had busted them to me. Uh, and then I pushed them back down in the flats, Yeah, you know, not mm -hmm. even knowing that they were coming that far around. Because right. we got on the radios and we seen those guys going up that right up the gut, right towards them. And that fork and horn and three point just decided to roll over. I'm like, hey, Adam, they're headed your way. But I thought they might just went up on the hill and bedded or just sit down. But... Like you said, they ended up rolling, rolling two ridges over. Those guys just blew it. Just yeah. Just beelined it right at them. Just I mean, why straight would you for them. Anyway? <laughs> straight for them. You Rambo in, style. You run into that a lot when you're hunting public land. Mm -hmm. Like we ran into that even last year and this year. You're like, okay, we got these deer bedded. This is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, the first time we met, me and Talon went. We spotted these bucks like two miles up. I'm like, I'm going for it, dude. And he's like, you're crazy. Like, I haven't seen much. I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm not going to go home and say I didn't try. Mm -hmm. So I start in on it. I mean, these deer are like, he. I don't know how he spotted them. They're it was the lucky, luckiest long. spot ever. We were just coming down the road, and I looked up on the hill, and I just seen something white. I mean, it was just, it was a long ways out there. And I was like, I'm going to look at that. And I pulled up the binos, and there was a deer right there in my binos. I'm just like, boom. Yeah, eagle eyes like your dad. Man. Dude, I don't know how he's Got the it. spot and scope on it, and we're like, oh, there's a nice buck in there. And I'm like, I'm like. I didn't really want to go after it. It was too far for me. Not that it was too far for me. It was just like I wasn't, mo was I wasn't motivated to go do it. It wasn't a trophy yeah. or something. <laughs> it was just I wasn't motivated to go do it. So Connor's like, somebody has to go after it. And I'm like, well, it's not me. So you strapped on the boots and <laughs> we went for it. Went for I'm it. on my way up. Talon's trying to walk me in. And these guys from Nebraska, remember, mm -hmm. stopped like, hey, what are you guys doing? How yeah. you guys? How you guys hunting and trying to figure out like just like we were. And I'm on my way up there and, and Talon's like, Oh, there's another hunter up there. What in the world? He's like, oh, dude, another guy just busted him. I'm like, yeah. Uh, here I hiked. I mean, I was uh, getting close to him. <laughs> yeah. Another guy busted him. So last year and this year, we ran into that like a lot. ridiculous. Uh -huh. Well, man. think about it, guys from Nebraska are coming down there. That's yeah, crazy. <laughs> they got they got amazing deer hunting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's public land. Anybody can come, but for sure, yeah. It's just you're they might be. Now that was for mule deer, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, maybe they were trying to get on a big mule or something. So that stock blew. Spent most of the rest of the day just glassing and looking. Didn't you went up on the hill and I ended up coming coming up there. Yeah, I went up. I kind of just went up to the very top because um, I was already halfway up this little bowl on the backside. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, they're like, hey, come back down, and I'm like, ah, the. The bucks or the all the deer on that hillside had already blew out because of those guys and 
and me not knowing that the deer had rolled over. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just here. I'm just going to come right up to the top. So I just went right up to the top and posted out there mm. for like, I'm like, I'm just going to post out up here and you guys can finish out your hunt down there and I'll just watch, see what I see, you know, see what anything starts moving around. I don't remember what I saw. I think I might have saw some deer on the backside. Um, no bucks or nothing like that, at least in distance. Yeah. And, and then, then I ended uh, up coming up and getting on the other side and just class that evening. I'm not, you went and did some walk hunting, didn't you, that I day? I think so. And then, yeah, he seen those, I seen those. I'm like, all right, let's come back here tomorrow and see what we can pick up. Sure enough, they're back. They sure enough, they're back. Huh. And on the other end of the ridge line, I was glassing over there, and we picked up some does, and then I ended up spotting a buck. I think it was another decent three by two or something like that. Mm-hmm. That was when we picked up the cat that morning, right? We yeah, saw seen a mountain cool. line that day. He was that coming. was cool. That's actually what. That's what made here. us look over there, yeah. right? Yep. Didn't you get some video of that, or someone get some video of that? Or yeah, something? I got some yeah. some pretty good video. That's cool. So yeah, we you you went up there, and then I think me and Adam did walk hunts. Still hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's still hunting through there. It's like thick, and you jump dove, man. I mm-hmm. mean, Probably dove after, me after dove so. after dove. It's unbelievable how many dove are out there. And uh, I think that might have been the night I, sh- I shot that javelina, right? No, that was the last, second to last night. Second to, second last, to last night. night. Yeah, that okay. day just kind of that story. Yeah. Yeah, if we'll finish out your, your stock that day, um, then yeah. the next day you ended up in a deer bed. You went your yeah. bu- by a scorpion. <laughs> you didn't right? have a you didn't yeah. have a pistol or anything. I didn't have a pistol or nothing. Just had my bow, and they're like going right to where the yeah, mountain I'm like, was. All right, we gotta stop. Full right send with, it. Just full send it. <laughs> so I ended up working down and around, getting the wind right. And so you spotted that three. We spotted that three pointer, and there was another buck with them. But there was a lot of deer in that area on that hillside, and I was like, okay, I'll just work it slow. We ended up bedding the buck down that area, mm. and. uh Started working what, around. What, middle of the day or late morning or oh, something? Oh, was it late morning? I think it was, yeah, like yeah, mid-morning. mid-morning. It Got was almost noon by the yeah. time you were over mm. there, probably. So, worked around, ended up blowing two does out of the bottom, and they worked over the ridge to where those deer were at. And I got on the radio and said, hey, blew two does out there, coming your guys' way. And I'm not sure if you guys spotted them or not, seen them come over that hill. <laughs> but ended up working around, getting above them, and wind was still okay, and... We kind of lost visual on them, on those deer yeah. with the sun. and Well, they that was the best scenario I think we yeah. had. Yeah. Remember, because we saw that buck bed, mm-hmm. and, I mean, we kept the spotters on him. We had two spotters, kept it on until that buck bedded, and we literally saw him saw him bed down in the sh- shade, and they call him ghost for the ghost mm-hmm. for a reason. <laughs> like, literally, when that thing bedded down, it just disappeared, and we saw, like, one, one tine through the brush or something, that if he if we we hadn't have, you right. know, watched him We'd bed never there you'd never, never know that, mm-hmm. and so all the deer completely disappeared except for that one, that one uh, little piece of the deer that we could see, mm-hmm. and you know as the shade moves and everything you that end up losing spot, it yeah. throughout mm-hmm. the day. Yeah. Um. But we kept eyes on him and watched that spot because we knew he was bedded in there, yeah. and if Talon could get up within range, you know. Yeah. Uh. And if if he could get time, we could walk him in. Uh. Uh, on the bed of deer, you know. How and sweet it, would that be to shoot a deer in its bed? Oh, that would be I was, sweet. I was so excited because I took my sweet time getting up there, mm-hmm. just making sure every step counted, and got up on the ridge, and I was like, okay, it's it's going to happen. And as soon as I got up there, there was it was down by the border. There's so many signs of just people walking through there. On top mm-hmm. of that ridge line, there was a big, like, pillar of rocks somebody built up. There's probably seven foot high of these rocks built up up there. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And just looked, checked it out, and it was probably only 50 yards from above the deer. So You didn't know that? I didn't what? know that. So I was trying to tell them if they could see it and just kind of give a description where I was at. So I ended up moving closer on top of the ridgeline to where they could get a visual on me. And got up there. Wind was perfect. I'm glassing down. And Arizona, the brush is so thick. I mean, you can't see but 20 yards through that stuff. It's thick. It's How just, tall is it? It's it's not that it's super tall, it's just that it's so compact mm-hmm. and brush you can't you can't get a visual through it really. But I mean, is it like waist it's high? Pretty tall. I it's mean, pretty shoulder tall. High. About about height high. Oh, is it yeah, really? It's, oh, it's wow. tall. And then you can only if from different angles you can only get mm-hmm. so many lanes where you can see f- for a little ways. Mm-hmm. So I'm glassing down on it and got on the radio and asked if you guys had any visual on them and they're like. Can't, didn't really have a visual on yeah, at that time. We hadn't seen them since like the shade moved and yeah. they disappeared. So, 
ended up getting up there and glassing it, picking it apart, and couldn't get a visual on them and didn't see them. So ended up slowly working down, trying to get a better better view of the angle and just nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'll just stay up here and keep an eye on it because where that saddle was where they could have rolled over was probably only 60 yards from me. I was like, I'll just sit here and wait the day out and see what happens. So noon, about noon, 1 o'clock, I was like, well, they're bedded. They're sleeping. I'm going to sleep. So I ended up getting on the hill, and there was this, this perfect deer bed right there. And it was weird because there was rocks built up around it, like somebody was sitting up there, but there was a deer bed right in the middle of that. Mm. So I just set my bow down and laid right in this little cubby and just took a nap. I was like, you guys get on the radio if you see something. They're like, okay, we're going to go do some still hunting, take a nap. So sat there and just took it easy. Afternoon came out, started glassing, and all of a sudden on that saddle, two coos jumped up. I was like, okay, game on. Look, both does. And all of a sudden, deers just started popping up, and it was all does. Never got a visual on that buck. Mm. I don't know where he went. He slipped out somehow. He didn't come out. He didn't go down the hill, and he didn't go up the hill. So not for sure what happened. Uh -huh. A couple deer did actually go down the basin and cross the road, and I got glass on them. And I'm pretty sure they were just does, but possibly it could have been that buck. But spent that whole evening up there. For nothing. For nothing. But it oh, was cool. Yeah. It was cool getting to sleep in that little hole. And yeah. I actually woke up. I woke up and I was looking on my final harness. And, like, I forgot about scorpions in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up. And it was just a, the smallest one. Yeah. I mean, it was just sitting there on top of my final harness. And I didn't move. I was just like. <laughs> and just flicked it off and just yeeted that thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, goodness. I was like, if that was a big thing, I would have been screaming. They would have heard oh, me right no down the hill. <laughs> so, ended up spending that evening. That's almost more creepy, though, because that can get in your well, shirt. Or, uh, well, I was thinking, shorts, I was like, man. what in the yep. world? What was crawling on me when I was asleep? Because I didn't right. have a clue. I'm like, what if yeah. that thing's mama would have went right over my chest and I didn't even know it? <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. dude. So, that, that wrapped up that evening. You guys got on some deer. Walking through that flats out there, and yeah, well, I mean, there are so many, so many deer out, so in many region. goose deer. That's cool. Yeah. in that area, it's insane. Like if we're looking to draw a rifle tag there, we're gonna be looking into that. If we can do that, yeah, you'll get it'll one. It'll be a done deal. Yeah, um, hopefully. But for archery coos, I mean, we could. I I did a lot of still hunting in that area, like below <laughs> that mountain waiting. range. There were you jump them. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to. It's hard to still hunt. Like, it's not super loud, but, I mean, if they catch, like, I got on a few different groups of mule deer, um, and mule deer, they might see you, and they'll pause, you know, for a few seconds before they'll, like, bounce off, and then maybe they'll stop and look at you. But coos deer, if they see you, they're, like, gone. Mm -hmm. Turned out hightailing it, literally. I mean, you get the big white tail. Mm -hmm. I hate those white Kind of obnoxious. Loser. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So you can just, like, creep over a hill and all of a sudden right there 50 yards away in the brush, I jumped a nice cruise bucket, like, 50 yards, same hill I was on, and I just came just right over. just don't even give you yeah. a chance. It's like. And that is frustrating because, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, I we've, half the reason we've killed mule deer before is because they give you that, sometimes they give you three seconds, sometimes they give you 20. Yeah. That's the only reason we've probably got them at times, but that's a bummer. Don't get me wrong, mule deer hunting is a challenge. Oh, oh yeah. 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 It's yeah. hard, not but that yeah. sounds like a whole nother That's level a of whole nother level of chasing deer right yeah. there. Yeah. It's hard. Is there any like uh water holes like cows? So, uh, I mean I know there's probably not much water out there, but I was that was like my thing on the trip. I'm <laughs> like way out of water water boys, hole. we need to find a water hole. Let me sit on a water <laughs> hole. Give me a water <laughs> hole. So we were finding we seen little oh, puddles yeah. and we're like, There's your water hole. Go Constant. sit on a <laughs> <con. laughs> right there. <laughs> I did go sit on one for an afternoon, nothing productive. The last evening i found a i think would have been a really good spot to sit but mark it with the onyx yeah yeah i got it for next time nice but there was you could set and see there was two water holes actually and like a bank in between them so you could have sat on that bank and seen anything coming mm -hmm. but of course you don't find it till the last evening mm -hmm, so of course but mm -hmm. that was tough. also did you are you the only one that killed a javelina on that trip yeah or the, yeah okay he that did was, the first year yeah i did the yeah. first year that's that's a funny story yeah Go ahead. Tell them you you do the first one. First one? That was actually our first year or up there. Do we got time? Yeah, we'll do yours and then yours and we'll okay. call it. Yeah. Wrap. First year went up there and we never even seen Havelina before. And started seeing them and 
ended up getting up in this rough country. During that trip, we did a lot of driving, just trying to mm-hmm. learn learn stuff, and uh, just checking it all out. And ended up seeing these have leaned down a canyon and went down there. And Connor's like, I'm not going down there. I was like, I'll go down there. So worked my way down, and all of a sudden I heard something. I looked, and about 20 yards, there's one sitting right there. And all of a sudden, boop, 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 they just start popping out of the grass. Mm. And those are aggressive, aggressive little <laughs> yeah. things. They, yeah. they start grunting, <laughs> kicking up dust, and just whoosh, just running everywhere. Well, all of a sudden, I draw back, got a range on one, and he's sitting there looking at me through this brush, and he's just, just growling and kicking up dust. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought he was going to run at me, and there was just this tree branch about yay big with a gap in it. And I was like, all right, I'll send it right through that. <laughs> Let it go. Arrows flying. I was like, oh, perfect. Boom, hit the tree branch and just went skyrocketed up. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, crud. Thing t- turns around, takes off running, just starts going, whoo, just running around, scraping up dust. And he didn't go that far. And all of a sudden, he turned around and comes running at me like this right here. Knock another arrow <laughs> in. And he's just walking towards me, just growling, kicking up dirt. <laughs> and he's coming. And I was like, okay, he's going to stop. But he wouldn't stop coming. And <laughs> he's standing there, and all of a sudden, he stops. And I had my 20 pin, and I set it right on his chest. and let it off. First time I ever killed anything with that mm-hmm. those broadheads. And I mean, it just blew through him. Just, whoosh, you could hear it blow through him. Really? Through his chest. Through his chest and went right through him. And he runs off the hill. I'm like, Connor seen him. He heard the hit. And I counted out the steps. He was 15 steps from me. When you shot him? When I shot him. He was Holy 15 smokes. steps. And I was like. So that's, that's barely over 10 yards. Yeah, like 10 yards. Yeah. He was just right there. And you put it, your twenty on them, put my 20 which low. just proves when they're that close. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's kind of good to know. Yeah, like put the twenty yeah. or below, and you'd be good to go. So ended up finding them, and yeah, that was my Avelina. But how far guy, did he go after you shot him? He he actually ran a little ways. He probably ran probably eighty yards, but I had a good blood trail. Ended up finding him, and yeah, probably eighty mm-hmm. yards. But huh. he was a lot tougher than I thought he was going to be. Yeah, but. That that was the time you the trip you didn't have a phone. I think you lost. Yeah, I didn't have phone. my phone that trip. Or was that like the eighth time you lost your phone? <laughs> yeah, probably tenth or twelfth. So we don't have any pictures of it. So I mean, technically, you could be making all this up. But, no, I yeah, I didn't it. have a phone to take. Hmm. Just take pic- We didn't have a phone to take pictures. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, yeah, I got. Well, I had went on a still hunt for the evening. Um, when I got mine, I was coming back to the truck, and it's like right before dark, and Adam and Talon had beat me to the truck so the the road curved so i could i could see the truck to my right and i'm walking down the road <laughs> and uh i i get past something and and i hear it just like whoo, whoo. i'm like what in the world and then i look behind me sorry might have no, to you're just good, no you're good I, I heard something snorting behind me i'm like what in the world because like, you're, you're just sitting there no i was walking walking back oh, to the truck, the truck. Okay. and I, I see these like these two black things moving around i'm like Oh my goodness! My my heart starts racing. I'm like, what in the world? And uh, figure out they're javelinas. So I get my range finder range, and it's like 40 yards. So I I draw back, and they're like milling around, and I I kiss at it. Finally get one to stop broadside, and I fling one. I hear it just go, just hear a whap, and hear it go like that, like snort. And then I seen there was two of them, and like one started to come to me, and I had a 357 on my hip, and I'm like, hey, I ain't got time for you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hearts going ninety. I'm like, hey, I don't. These things got gnarly cutters on them. Mm. So I'm like, hey, I ain't messing around with these things. So I uh, heard it snort, and uh, they kind of worked to the left. So I thought they might have got away. And I'm like, Dallin, Adam, I just shot a Javi or a Javi. I was saying it weird for some reason. They're like, what? <laughs> like I just shot a Javi. What? I'm like, bring the truck. <laughs> I, sh- I shot Javi. <laughs> we were like, what? No. We were like up at the Someone truck. Someone jumped the border, me man. And, <laughs> yeah, no, me and Talon had walked down from Glass, and, and, and it was getting dark. Like, man, where's Connor? I don't know. And all of a sudden, we're like, here's something. We're like, wait, what was that? We're like, listen. And Talon's like, way down the can. He's like, shot a Javi. And we're like, <laughs> we're like, what? He's like, I shot a hog. And we're like, what? And I'm like, I think he said he shot a hog. And he's like, He's like, it's still wiggling. I don't want to grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick it up. He's like, no. So we went down there, and then you can that take it funny. from there. But Yeah, I didn't really know. The other one started to, like, make his – just pointed at me, you know. So I, I drew my gun out. And uh, <laughs> anyways, I went over there to it. Or I, I didn't find it before you guys were there. I think you guys yeah, helped me find it. We were there. Yeah, we had a couple it. lights. And- 
got some lights and my arrow blew right through it was stuck mm. in the dirt and uh just tore his lungs up he just nice. he died within 15 yards where i shot oh, it oh really yeah he wow. was smoked it but he like went behind a you tree you probably so didn't have a flashlight though huh i think i had a headlamp oh, okay so we were able to yeah, get should... on it and then should we tell him about the other one or leave that for the yeah that other after one was still like he was hanging around looking for Trouble. Looking for trouble, yeah. yeah. So, so we we yeah. gave him trouble. <laughs> he ended up getting away, though. He outsmarted yeah. us. Yeah. You but, man, they're a little aggressive. A little. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But it was cool. What do you think they weigh? Like a full-grown one. I don't know. 30 pounds? Yeah, 30. Oh, really? That yeah. little? 30, 40. 40. Oh, man, they're it just depends on what size you get, yeah. So I, what, like, the size of, like, uh, as far as a dog, what kind of dog would you say? Because, I mean, I'm guessing in my head what the, how big they are, but they must be smaller I mean, than I'm even thinking. Like, Okay, a full like grown that. one. But yeah, they're I mean their chompers are like Are they really that long? Yeah. Huh? They got top and bottom ones. They're they got like fangs, like a Yeah. It's it's crazy. I, I kept the skull of mine. Thomas is gonna year oh, okay, it for cool. me. So what are they like? Mine are like that two probably. Three quarter cutters? Probably, yeah. Wow. Two and three inch cutters. That's why I, you up. I ain't messing around with those yeah. things, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if they're that aggressive and if they're yeah. stomping and snorting and growling and <laughs> Kicking up dust. <laughs> we man. sound like a bunch of wimps, but hey. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, until your legs all shredded. Yeah, yeah. you know from, it's cool because you had those opportunities to hunt the deer. And yeah, talk about and shredded. It's not yeah. all that'll eat you there. No. <laughs> oh. Oh, the bushes and all that stuff, or teddy bear cactuses. Oh, <laughs> they're the real deal. They're rough. Yeah, they're, and there's probably like no sight. I wonder if you'd be okay if you wore those uh, dills that gators. go over your pants. Gators, uh, like leather, yeah, like chap- ga- yeah. gators or something. Would that help? I don't know. They go right through like. Ooh. Yeah. They hurt though, huh? Rain yeah. gear, anything, yeah. They, they got just... reverse reverse barbs on them, oh, so, so you can't can... pull them out. Really? Well, you could pull them out, but you just gotta grit your teeth and <laughs> get a pair of pliers. Because I mean, they're reverse barbs. That guy from yeah. Animal Planet actually did a review on them. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> he slapped he his hand. Ag- yeah, slapped his hand against it, and he's like, "Oh!" <laughs> he tried pulling them out, and in that leather glove, he's just sitting there with pliers pulling as hard as he can. There's something I seen a little clip of some guys hunting in New Mexico. I wonder if it's that same stuff. It's and he was, it was through his gloves. He was wearing thick gloves. He's like, oh, no, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. It had to have been the same thing because even be. him, he didn't seem like no sissy. And he was like, stop, stop, stop. He's like, went to go pull his glove. He couldn't even pull his glove off because it was through the glove into the skin. So he goes, they had to cut the glove off and like work it out that way. So I was like, that has to be what you guys are talking about. It has to be the same thing. And you'd be hiking. I've never it. even heard of that. You'd be hiking through it, and all of a sudden, just I mean, out of nowhere, it just hits you. Seems like they jump almost. It's like the, like a jumping <laughs> cactus. There is some type of cactus that does that. They yeah. say that will get all over your bunch mm. of pricklies. Well, you like break one off, and they come in little groups, and so like you don't even have to get very close to one, but it pulls it, and the other one's like oh, slapping yeah. with it. Ah, uh, yeah. And pretty soon you got like That's four nasty. little things in the back of your thigh. Now, if you go further north, that they're not up there as much. Mm-mm. Is it more of the border type thing yeah. going on? Yeah, yeah. down That's down nasty. the desert. I mean, I I got to <clears throat> touch the border wall, the Trump building down you? there. Yeah, <laughs> did you really? Did they have it actually right there? Yeah, it's in it's, the middle of nowhere. Then it's got like gaps in it though. Right. So like it's straight, you know, heavy metal or steel, uh-huh. whatever it's made out of, like twenty feet tall. Yeah. Like nobody can fit through it, but then there'll be like a gap. Like, what do we see? A gap five feet, ten feet wide. And there's a gap like 20 feet wide. Anybody can crawl Did through. Did they just cut it or something? Someone I have, cut it? Just somebody didn't finish it? it or, yeah. There was weird. border patrol, though, all over down there. There's guys in these trucks driving. You'd see them everywhere, though. Really? Yeah. They were never stopped us or anything, but they're down there for mm-hmm. sure. Hmm. But Interesting yeah. experience. Just a couple stories. Of Next year, is that where you guys going to kind of, we're going to try to stay north? Uh, we're hoping uh, we can stay. Hoping that zone is open. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that from the first year. On the first year. Yeah. I, know, I told I said I was gonna go with you guys. I swore to Tom I was and then <laughs> Flake. we had we had a really good duck hunting trip, so <laughs> no regrets. But it would be fun just to with the experiences and being around everybody. It's, well, it's fun. a blast. Yeah, yeah it's so much Plenty, fun. But yeah, fun. that's just a couple stories we I mean yeah. there's there's, so there's so many stories. Oh yeah. yeah. But we, did. we didn't even get into the, the last day. We didn't get into last the last day buck. The last shot. The miracle buck. Yeah. That one that got away. <laughs> there's one that got away. That was something. Little little cliff. Well, they all got teaser. away, but <laughs> <laughs> they all got yeah. away. The one, the one out of a we almost had. shouldn't yeah. have got away. <laughs> almost didn't get away. away. All right. Well, thanks you guys for coming over, doing this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.